you know, I'm sitting up front, and I don't realize how many people are here. <laughs> if I was in Russia, I'd say, God is good, and you'd say, God is good indeed. So the Lord, or he is risen indeed. I am old, an older couple. That's, it reminds me of verse in Psalms um, 71, 18. It says, I guess it was David. He said, I, I was once was young, but now I'm old and gray, and I qualify pretty good. You know, I'm almost there. And I'm 81 years old, so I may be the oldest one here. But he says, Lord, don't take me till I tell the next generation, the younger generation, of your glory, of your holiness, and of your power. I don't want to talk about that just briefly, a brief testimony. When I was 35 years old, I was a senior engineer with General Motors, and I'd worked hard to get that position. I also owned, owned a lot of farmland, I had a backhoe business going, and I was driving day and night to, to make money. Money was my goal. And I had a lot of benefits, could drive a new car every year, stocks and bonds with GM. And at 35, I made a total commitment of my life to Jesus Christ. Not only that, I, I, I failed the Lord twice. Uh, one time, I was driving from one General Motors plant to another. There was an older engineer uh, with me, and I felt uh, I should talk to him about the Lord. Now, I was a Christian at that time, but I didn't know anything uh, much about the Holy Spirit. Yeah, Vladimir talked a lot about the Holy, Holy Spirit, but I felt I should talk to the older man about the Lord, and I, I didn't do it. I put it off, and he died that night, massive heart attack. I felt bad. But not bad enough. On our farm, we, uh, we boarded horses. Um, we had a, a racehorse uh, barn. And there was a young man that uh, had a very beautiful horse. He came out every night uh, to ride his horse. One night he came out with a friend to ride the horse. And I was doing something on the farm. And I felt that same thing. Talked to him about the Lord. And I put it off. I thought, he's here every night, and i got to finish what I'm doing, and I didn't talk to him about the Lord. Those two young men that night got drunk, uh, stole an airplane, if you can imagine trying to steal an airplane and take it off at night, but they did. They didn't even get to the end of the runway, got off the ground, put it on his back, killed them both. Well, I started to think, that wasn't my brain telling me that. That was the Holy Spirit speaking to me. And I really felt bad. Three men had died, and I should have talked to them about the Holy uh, getting right with the Lord. You know, unless you're born again, you're going to hell if you're not born again. And I felt so bad about it that I prayed on my knees with tears in my eyes, hands raised to the heavens, and I said, God, if you will forgive me, I make a vow that the rest of my life I will obey the still small voice of the Holy Spirit, no matter how much it costs me financially or where it takes me in the world. Now, you know, I had worked at two jobs, driven hard to get to where I was financially, and the Lord put me to the test, just like when Jesus told a rich young ruler to sell everything you have, give it to me, and, and uh, follow me. And the Lord spoke to me to sell my farmland. I sold it, and we gave the money to the Lord. Uh, and then sell your stocks and bonds with GM, give me the money. We did that. And I said, Lord, I've given you everything I have. And he said, no, you haven't. He said, you have a paid-up life insurance, sell that, and you're cashing in, give it to me. And I did. Now, that was not easy to do all of that. But what happened? God led me out of General Motors and quitting my job after uh, that age and getting up at the top in engineering. It was not easy. When I walked out of all the security I had, the retirement, the insurance, and everything, and I felt the Lord said, get one year of Bible training and follow me. Now, my only hobby I ever had was flying airplanes. 
I love to fly, and I, I could fly about anything. I love to do acrobatic flying. First hour I soloed, I looped it six times. Now, anyway, there was a mission called Worldwide Evangelization Crusade, uh, and uh, one of the larger interdenominational missions. They had a pilot that uh, was killed in a crash named Don Collins, and they were praying that God would send him a pilot. And God led me from engineering to that mission. I had no idea. Until I got there, they were praying for a pilot. And I ended up a jungle pilot, a missionary pilot, flying in the jungle in West Africa. And we have what we called medical evangelism. We would fly into the villages, treat the sick people. And then uh, those that could not be treated, I would fly them to the hospitals. Of course, our, our first thing was preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ first. Number one, if you save them physically and they go to hell, that's no good. You know, that's no good. Now, something happened. I... I want to say, this is Resurrection Sunday. And I want to talk about that. And this story is really touching to me, and I'm going to try to talk it without breaking down. But I was in an accident in Liberia, West Africa, 200 miles back in the jungle. And it was not an accident with Christ in the airplane. I was electrocuted by a generator and welder, I, I fell into some very high, I stumbled, fell into some very high uh, power, and it knocked my heart into what they call fibrillation. In fibrillation, your heart no longer beats like this, it quivers, and I couldn't breathe, and uh, Bible school students came there, my children was there, my wife was there, my other missionaries were there, and, and, uh, I, they carried me in the house, laid me down. I went totally paralyzed. I could not even move a finger. Totally paralyzed. I couldn't talk. Struggling for every breath. I told my family I loved them. Right at last, I knew I was dying. And as I was dying, the Holy Spirit came upon me in a way that... I had never experienced. I don't have the words in English to tell you how beautiful it was. Beautiful is the best I can get in English. But I laid there, and I knew death was right there. And I thought, I've wondered how it would be to die. Now, in John 11, 25, 26, Jesus said this, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me shall never die. This is a resurrection Sunday right today. I never understood that verse because there's another place that says, I was pointed unto man wants to die, and after that, the judgment. Now, I, I, I couldn't quite understand that. I thought we do die, but I understand it now. Because when I could no longer fight for life, fight for breath, I died. But I did not die. It was like it started about right here, and I exited. I went out. I didn't feel death. I didn't feel anything that I died. I died. And when I went out up at an angle about like that, there was, I felt it was the Lord. It might have been an angel, probably was an angel, dressed in white. I knew they were waiting upon me. And I knew that I didn't speak with them with my mouth anymore. I spoke with them with uh, my mind. And I said, I called him Lord. I said, Lord or Jesus, I'm ready to meet you, but people are going to hell and I pray that you'll give me a little longer to preach. Uh, and I know that is only the reason why I'm here today is because of Jesus Christ died for our sins, rose again, and defeated death, hell, and the grave, and it's so important, and I ask for longer to present that message to the lost. And 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I went from paralyzed. It was when he said, I will give you a little longer. It was bing, just like that, millisecond. My spirit, my body joined again. I went from couldn't breathe uh, because when your heart is not beating right, uh, you can't breathe. I didn't know that before that. <laughs> but, it, but anyway, I went from that and I started shouting. I couldn't talk before. I started shouting a verse out of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 47 or something. I don't know. But anyway, oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? And then I said, I've came to the edge of death and I've looked in and I've seen nothing but glory in Jesus. Now, that's what he did for us. We don't have to fear death. Now, I don't know if anybody ever fears death or not, but it can be the best time you ever had in your life. <laughs> now, there used to be a guy named Paul Harvey, and he said the rest of the story. Now, I told you, and this is for you young people, and I, I want to say this. We're not here by accident today. We're on our 6,000-mile trip from mid-northern. We live in the mid-northern part of Indiana. We were going to go to a different place this morning according to our plan. But in Indiana, the Lord spoke to me to go to this church today. Yeah. Thank you, too. And I felt the Lord wanted me to give this testimony, and especially for the young people. Now, young people, sir, listen, listen, and listen. I was young once, but now I'm old. <laughs> but I made a total commitment of my life to Jesus Christ when I was 35, older than most of you. And what happened? God sent us to a mission which you couldn't even make your needs known. That scared me to death. And we had to live trusting God and, and uh, praying. And God, it worked. And you know, we ended up blessed of the Lord. And the quick rest of the story is, when I was much, much, much older, and back home and Midwest representatives for our mission, the Lord told me in a still small voice, Put a resume back in with General Motors and tell them a high, high price that they can get you if they want you. And I did. And even at a high age, they hired me. And then God gave me four inventions. One of my inventions alone saves General Motors $3,500 a day, 365 days a year. Now, I had to sign away my... Uh, uh, my patent rights, but with those, uh, those, uh, they did give me more money. <laughs> <laughs> and God has blessed us, and we have more than what I gave him, uh, gave away, or more if I'd have stayed on the other job, and or had my land. But God restored that, and then God blessed me with a wonderful wife here, Esther. <laughs> And this was one of the most difficult things I, I ever did, uh, obeying the still small voice of the Holy Spirit. Now, my first wife passed away fairly young, lived by myself for a while, and the Lord spoke to me in the still small voice to call Esther and propose to her sight unseen. I had, I had seen her before, but it was so many years, I couldn't think of how she looked. And the Lord bless, <laughs> blessed me, and I called her up and proposed. She, uh, she wasn't impressed at all. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, God is good, young people. Give 100% to the Lord when you're young. And my life has been so exciting We've seen thousands of people come to Jesus Christ. We've seen millions of dollars come in for support to the ministries we've been involved in. And we serve a faithful God. He's a risen son of the God. But 
he is doing things today like they did in the book of Acts. And, and we thank him. I can't get into any more of that, but I uh, love you all and God bless.